Hi, this is Steve Xiao from Digital Asset. In this video, we're going to go through three SDK tools that you should be aware of as you embark on your journey to learn demo development. Don't go anywhere. Your experience as a developer learning a new framework or programming language is as good as the tooling that's available to you. For demo, we have paid particular attention to making sure that you have a set of SDK tools that will help you be successful in writing your demo code. Hi, this is Steve Xiao from Digital Asset. In this video, we're going to go through three SDK tools that you should be aware of as you embark on your journey to learn demo development. The first tool is Demo Script. Demo script gives you a very simple way to test your code and get immediate feedback from inside of the Demo Studio, which is the customized version of Visual Studio Code for demo development. The script doesn't really interact with any ledger, so no data is persistent. Think of it as a ledger simulator. So the first thing I want to do is to fire up the terminal and check my demo version. I've not used this Mac for a while, so I may be behind. Sure enough, I have a 1.12. Now you can go to our webpage, demo.com and go to documentation and see that uh, what version we're running. In this case, we are at 1.16 at the time of recording. So I'm gonna have to upgrade it. Back at the terminal, we can uh, see what commands are available by doing demo help. In this case, we're looking for a demo install. You wouldn't find a demo upgrade, but uh, if you were to go to demo install, you will see a list of choices available to you. And we really want the first one that says demo install latest. So let's go ahead and run demo install latest. And I'm going to speed up my frames four times, but it's a fairly um, quick download and install. If I run demo version again, I should have both SDKs in there, but the latest one will be default for the for new projects. I'm going to create a new project now. The command is demo new, name of the project, which I'm going to call my first demo app. And notice that it has been created using a template called skeleton. Next, I'm going to CD into my project folder, which is uh, something that people miss a lot and run demo studio. Visual Studio opens up. And if you go into the demo folder, you see a main.demo with pre-written code for you. Now, the first thing I want you to pay attention to is the import statement. The second thing to pay attention to is between lines 23 and 24 for this particular demo file. And then the third piece is the from 23 to 38, which is the script that you would write to test your code. Click on the script results and you get an output on the right that shows you the transactions. This is a table view. So first we have a main, which is the module name, followed by asset, which is the template name. And below, below that, you would see a table that has an ID that identifies the transaction, a status indicating that's an active contract, and the fields that are involved in this particular template. And then there are the parties involved, and X indicates who can see this particular contract. Click on Show Archive, and you will see that it will show you a history of transactions and now we see that the first two are archived because they have been overwritten by transaction number two, which is the current active contract for this particular template. Remember, there can only be one because the rest are archived. Click on the Show Transaction View button and you see a more detailed breakdown of this transaction. So first we have TX transaction zero, which is when Alice created a new asset called TV. So that is the first entry. The second transaction, TX1, tells us that she exercised a choice called give, uh, which is her giving the TV to Bob, the new owner. And that triggers a create command, which created a new owner uh, from Alice to Bob. So that will be 1.1. So this demo script output really shows you a breakdown of the transaction as you expect it according to your script. 
to me, demo script feels like uh, a console output and a unit testing tool rolled into a ledger simulator. It's incredibly useful. So let's move to the next tool. If you have done web development or consumed APIs from services like um, Twilio, you would be familiar with the concept of a sandbox. A sandbox is a, an isolated testing environment that you can use to quickly test your code or pieces of your code. Sandboxes are typically implemented locally on your computer or up in the cloud. Demo Sandbox runs locally on your computer and allows you to quickly stand up a ledger that can hold your data and test your model. But it is not persistent. There are ways to persist data if you use Postgres, but we'll reserve that for another video. Let's take a closer look at the Sandbox. So for this, I'm going to create a second demo project, and I'm going to use a template called Create Demo App. Uh, it's created. Let's cd into that directory and run demo studio, which brings up VS Code. And surprise, you see that you get a free UI that has been written for you in this template. We're going to have to build it, of course, but let's uh, go back to our terminal and do one more thing. We're going to build the particular demo file into a, and compile it into a DAR file by running demo build. And once we have that, we are good to go ahead and uh, build that UI. So let's cd into the UI and uh, first let me check my NPM version. Uh, I've not used this uh, MacBook for a while, so I'm going to have to um, update my NPM version. So let me just fast forward the screen here as I get the latest NPM version. Uh, let me run version again. I should get version 3, 7.23. That's great. Now I can go ahead and do an npm install inside of this UI uh, uh, directory. So speeding up the frames for you to save time. And it is done. All right, I can run npm start to fire up a local um, server to serve out that UI. Give it a couple of seconds and you should see a UI just like that. And from this point, you can type in any username. There's no password required. And you can start to play with the UI that will then interact with the templates and create contracts. But the more important part is that I want you to take a look at what happens behind the scenes. Now, let's go back to a terminal where we started the demo start command or the sandbox. Identify where the big sandbox uh, writing is and you will see right very close to the top, a ledger ID uh, for the sandbox has been assigned for this project and it is running. So back at the UI, you can log in with any name and you can start interacting with it and data will actually start to be inserted into that sandbox ledger. So we're going to have Alice follow Bob and then uh, we can log out and then have Bob log in on his side and look at what's going on, he sees that uh, he's connected to Alice. Great. Now, let's look at how this looks like behind the scenes uh, while the sandbox is running. So I'm going to put these two screens side by side. As you can tell, there are already activity uh, going on. So let's put it uh, next to each other. And I'm going to repeat what we just saw. I'm going to log in as Bob. And once I'm in, you see that there are activity that has already been inserted into the ledger. And if I were to follow Alice back uh, and click a follow, exercise that choice, and again, data is logged into the sandbox ledger. So having the sandbox available really allows you to quickly test your data model and your logic without standing up a real ledger. Let's move on to the next tool. Writing the front end is not trivial. Don't let the back end people tell you otherwise. In demo development, sometimes it's good to focus on the demo back end, the business logic, the data model, the architecture. And while you're working on that, it's good to have a UI that you can quickly test against. 
to see that your contracts, your templates are working as designed. For that, we give you Daml Navigator. We're going to go back to our first Daml app and um, run Daml Start. And uh, we'll see that something is a little different than uh, the second project. We see that we have a sandbox automatically invoked here as well as a new thing called Navigator that we have not seen before. And when that is finished running, you'll see a UI that automatically pops up. Now, we have not seen this in the previous um, second project. Why is that? So let's take a closer look. Let's go into our second demo app and fire up demo studio. And VS Code should open right up. If you go into the demo.yaml file, you will see that there is one line that says start navigator uh, false. Now that suppresses the navigator from firing and that's why we did not see it in that, that second project. In the first project, it's not there. So by default, it is going to start the navigator. So navigator comes for free unless you turn it off. So back at the navigator, uh, you will see that it will allow you to uh, pick a role. And by default, you are going to see Alice and Bob. So I can log into Alice and let's expand this. Let's take a closer look here. We see contracts and templates. Let's click on template. And in this particular project, we only have one template asset. That makes sense. Now remember 13D, okay? Let's uh, step back and go into one of the contracts. This is the active one, uh, but we can see all the archive one as well. And let's dig into one of the contracts. And let's look at the first one that was generated in the chain. And you will see that it is generated from the 13D template. Correct. So let's go into the active one and you see that again, it's generated from the 13D template. It makes sense because templates creates contracts. But this contract ends with 4C0 uh, is the active one. If you go to the next, the one before that, you see 807. So the IDs are changing because that has been archived and a new one has been created. So this is identical to what you see in the script output. But where on earth did this come from? This should be a blank ledger, right? We just started the ledger and why is it, uh, why are there transactions already? So if you look at your demo, remember this part here, that is the script. The script was executed along with the ledger as it was standing up because that was in your DAR file. And you see Alice and Bob, that part is specified in your demo.yaml file right here where you see parties. These, this party uh, field here is just for the navigator. So we can add Charlie, you can add uh, Daisy, you can add Ethan, and um, that means that the navigator will have these five pre-baked parties for you to log into. Woohoo! So now we can go to our navigator, refresh it, and we should see five names, right? Wrong. Why is it only Alice and Bob? Where are the other three names that I added? Well, remember that when you write your code, you are writing the .daml file and uh, it compiles to a .dar file, right? It says that I can just simply uh, click R to rebuild the ledger. Let's do that. Let's click R and it's um, resetting the ledger, compiling it to a .dar. And uh, so that should work, right? We should add those five names. But oops, big gnarly error here. There is a problem. If you scroll to the top, uh, the first few lines give it away. It says that party already exists. Why is that? Now the party already exists because we already have Alice and Bob. So let's um, have let's restart the ledger by doing a fresh clean start and do a demo start. Now it recompiles to the DAR file. It just doesn't add to the ledger. It restarts the sandbox, restarts the navigator. And once that is loaded, let's uh, refresh it. Ta-da! How cool is that? I hope this video has given you a great overview of your three new best friends in demo development. Demo script, Demo Sandbox and Demo Navigator. I'll see you in the next episode.
Tchau.